So it has been a couple of months since my last Q&A. Last month I did a bit of a behind the scenes for my 100k special, which was awesome. But I want to get back to answering your comments. The community on my channel is fantastic. It really is one of the best parts of being a YouTuber. So let's answer some of your weird and wonderful comments. So let's start with Tarquin, great name who says, when you don't mind leaving your car without checking if she is closed or not because your computer is more expensive. 173 likes on this comment. Okay, so this is talking about the 9,000 pound Acer Predator 21X video, where at the beginning, I take the laptop out of my boot of my car and take it into my uh, house. The reason I kept the boot open is a, because I didn't really think about it, because I, the whole point of that scene was just to show how big it was and bringing it into the house. And B, also, I guess, just to kind of hide the license plate, but my name's at the beginning of this video, and I'm sure you could find out who I am if you wanted to, but um, I figured it's probably best to hide a license plate, uh, registration plate, sorry, here in the UK. Next up, we've got Bros Pros, who says, by the S8, it's years ahead of this phone, talking about this phone, the OnePlus 5. So I'm definitely getting some conflicting thoughts on the Galaxy S8. Some people think it's the best phone ever, you should definitely buy it. Some people think it's a piece of shit. Um, actually, let me know in the comments what you think. I've got to say though, that even though it's not perfect and there are problems with it, it's very expensive um, and it's not as fast as even the OnePlus 5 or say the Google Pixel because they're much closer to stock Android. The Samsung UX does still slow it down a little bit. I think the combination of the design, the fantastic camera, the fact that it is obviously super powerful, I really do think as an all rounder, it is pretty much the best phone on the market right now. I hope it will be uh, superseded by the Google Pixel 2. I think the OnePlus 5, considering it's like 200 quid cheaper, is much better value option, uh, which I'm actually using now as my main phone every day. Probably S8 is still my favorite phone right now, flagship phone that is, but I do get why a lot of people don't like it, although saying it's a piece of crap and don't buy it maybe is a little bit too far. I do think it's definitely one of the best phones out there right now. Moving on and still talking about phones, Acres222 says, uh, never understood why bezel-less is even a thing. Try and use it, you'll have lots of unintended taps on the screen. So the LG G6 and the Galaxy S8 so far this year have really thin bezels, what they call like an infinity bezel. And actually this year I found that neither phone have any issue with like palm rejection where you accidentally touch uh, the screen with your fingers or your palm on the side of the phone. The S7 Edge did last year quite badly. My brother bought one and almost regretted it because as he held it, it would just sort of touch and scroll down and light it up and things and it was really annoying. I don't think there's a problem with that this year. They sort of fixed that. They've reduced the severity of the curve. Maybe they've improved the software slightly. So I actually think it looks really nice having a really thin bezel. It means you can get a bigger screen on a more compact phone, better screen to body ratio. Next up, Andromeda says, just found your channel because of beginner's tech. So I don't know what to expect. And then Finder Nemo kindly says, his channel is quite nice. First video I saw from him was about monitor buying guides. He has this professional but entertaining vibe, like cool teachers, which were quite rare when I went to school. I'm like a cool teacher. That's, um, is that, I think that's good. Thank you, uh, Findet. Andromeda, I hope you enjoy the channel. Hopefully you're watching this. I did a little uh, giveaway with Beginners Tech and also Zotac to uh, give away a GTX 1080 graphics card, which is still open until the end of July. I think it closes 2nd of August. I'll leave a link in the description as well if you still want to enter that. Now this is quite interesting because uh, NabalFX19 here says, I beg you again about the uh, 1080 giveaway. I don't have any say in who wins, nor does uh, Ryan from Beginners Tech. It's we use um, something called Gleam.io. It's like an automated competition website, and it will randomly select one of the entries. I've got, had quite a few Twitter messages and comments saying, oh, you know, I've loved your channel since the beginning, and 1080 would change my life. Um, I can't afford a 1080. Also, people who seem to have no money whatsoever, but obviously somehow have a pre-built computer with everything but a 1080 in it. So, I don't know. But the point is, neither of us can have any impact, which is great because it means there's no preferential treatment, but it also means sucking up to us and saying how awesome we are, unfortunately, isn't gonna work as much as we like it because we can't change it at all. The next comment comes from Abhinav Ajith, who says, my Air 2 is more than powerful enough for me, although four speakers and a 120 hertz panel would be nice. It's true, the problem with tablets and iPads especially is that they're all so good, there's not really a big reason to upgrade. The new iPad Pro 10.5, which I recently reviewed, is a nice little step up, especially that 120 hertz uh, screen, which makes it feel much faster just swiping between home screens and opening apps, things like that. I really do hope we see more high refresh panels and phones and tablets going forward. But if you only have an Air 2, there's not a whole lot of reason to upgrade. Yeah, the screen's a little bit nicer, the four speakers are nice, and of course, like on the new 10.5 and new 12.9, um, the 120 hertz panel. But while the new ones may be a tiny bit faster, the screen may be a little bit nicer, 
they all play the same apps, they all do fundamentally the same thing, which is why the entry-level iPad, which is like £329 or something on the Apple Store, is such a great buy because it's like half the price of the Pros. Yeah, it misses out on some of the extra features like pen support and smart accessories and bits and pieces like that, but for most people who just want a tablet, an iPad to watch Netflix and browse the web and put photos on, that'll do. So yeah, I think Apple and other tablet manufacturers are struggling really just to convince people to upgrade because their current tech is so good already. Now moving on to something a little bit more controversial because uh, Bo Sim here says, I respect you getting that money with a paid ad, but TalkTalk Talk is terrible. So a couple of weeks ago, I did a sponsored video for TalkTalk. Talk. It was completely uh, made clear it was sponsored from the uh, paid promotion in the beginning of the video. I say sponsored by TalkTalk Talk in the beginning, even the title had ad in it. It was a sponsored video and everyone does them. And all they wanted me to do was talk about how great fast fiber broadband is, which I did, and then just mentioned that TalkTalk Talk offer fiber broadband if you want it. A lot of people didn't like that, and I do get why, because most of my content, 99% of my content is uh, obviously genuine and just my own thoughts, and then every now and then, to help pay the bills, I do a sponsor video, or there's an advert in my video. It's tricky because you want to be completely transparent. There are a lot of YouTubers out there who do sponsor content, who do get paid to review things that don't disclose it, which is against the YouTube terms of service, but I don't know if that would ever be enforced on. But when you do disclose it, obviously you are opening yourself up to uh, criticism and people thinking you're selling out on things. So I'm sure you guys appreciate that um, being a YouTuber, especially a fairly small, medium-ish UK YouTuber, um, I'm not making millions and millions of pounds. So doing sponsor videos every now and then, putting the odd advert in does sort of help me continue to do this because um, it is just a hobby for me. I do it part time. So I do appreciate your patience when I do sponsor content. I always, always make sure it's declared. It's mentioned in the description. It's in the video. It's in the title. You will, you will know if it's a sponsor video. Um, so you can rest assured that anything else I publish, if it's not clearly signposted, is not at all sponsored, it's completely my own opinion. That's a good comment, I do appreciate what everyone's saying about that, and it is a bit of a touchy subject when it comes to YouTube and sponsored content. Oh, here we go, another one. Talk Talk has been added to HGMI and Monta. Cheers, Tom. Well, thanks, Bruce. <laughs> I guess that's uh, one more thing I can't say properly. We've got HDMI, monitor, I say Monta, Marta. Okay, apparently talk, talk Talk, I'm not from New Jersey, but only Talk Talk is added to my list, so um, thanks, Bruce, for bringing that up. Aryaman? Aryaman? Aryaman. Just gotta say, scripting your videos is not lame or stupid. Most tech tubers, tech tubers, that's cool, do that, like Linus Tech Tips. It's not only better since you know your matter, but you've also done your homework about the product. Keep it up, great videos, and at this rate, you'll be at 500k in no time. And it's been really interesting to see how positive people are about using a prompter and scripting videos, because as Mr. Barkley, Mr. Ryan Barkley, who uh, I know has been a long, long time uh, viewer of the channel, he basically says that, um, as long as you uh, are still spontaneous and you're not really boring and you keep the viewer engaged, it's all fine. Go for it. You know, use prompters. I mean, if I had a script in front of me, which I don't right now, this is completely uh, off the top of my head. But if I was just reading a left to right monotone script like this and talking about the new Acer Predator 21X and how it's really, really good and things like that, you're going to turn off instantly. So yeah, I think as long as you can read a script off a prompter and be relatively engaging while you do it, then great. But yeah, if you can't do that or you struggle with that, um, and let me know if I do struggle with that, then um, definitely don't use it. So once again, thank you very much for all of your great comments. I do read pretty much every single one. I do apologize I don't get around to replying to every one. There are quite literally thousands of them now. So I um, sometimes spend like a couple of hours going through comments and then I realize I've only gone back like a day worth of uh, comments, which is amazing. It's a great sign on my channel that there's so much sort of community and uh, comments and suggestions and things. So do keep doing it. I read every single one. Give me a big thumbs up if you like the video. Leave any questions you like in the comments below. I will read and hopefully get back to every single comment in this video. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys.